I'm sitting there on the on the bar stool, and and I could hear in my heart, and I hear that um, the different sins of the people that were in there, like this one's cheating on their wife, this one's happening here, this one's happening here, this one, you know, and then I'm seeing my own self. Is this what you want for your life? Is this what you want for the rest of your life? This is Touched by Heaven, everyday encounters with God, those moments when heaven and earth collide. And we see God, we see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention, inviting us into a closer relationship. Here we share stories of encounter with angels, divine intervention, prophetic dreams, visions, near-death experiences, big and little God incidents. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. Welcome, so glad you're here, episode 146. And the angel asked, is this the life you want? Think about that. There was Don Roeder sitting in the bar, and she had this experience, what you heard at the beginning of this episode, plus this question. A lot was going on. This was, this was the pivotal moment for Don Roeder. Where would this lead? Don has a book about a lot of this. It's called It Doesn't End Here. It's also the name of her website, It Doesn't End Here. I asked Don how she found the podcast. A friend guided her to me to tell this story and and sample the podcast. Some of you found us uh, through a friend or maybe a Google search or a YouTube search. I was talking to Roy Woolery. He'll be uh, a guest on an upcoming episode, has a great story. But I said, how'd you find the place, Roy? And he said, well, in my case, it was, I was tooling down the radio dial and I came across a show I haven't been listening to all that much and, and you were a guest. It was definitely the Holy Spirit. I have no doubt about it. There was the chances of me finding you that night and finding it the way it all happened was very nil. Because I am, I have always been a doubting Thomas. You know, I go, oh. and here you're coming up with counter arguments. You, you said you want some science, and you started spitting off. And, I, and your podcast really lifted me up. It really, really affected. Me. But please, please stay safe. This world really needs you. Yeah. Please stay safe. Oh, uh, will do. And thank you so much for your support on Patreon too. We appreciate that well, so much. You've done a good job of spreading the joy of God. Thanks, Roy, for following that nudge. And, and we, see, we see Roy every month because he's on the Zoom call. That's also a feature of, of our Patreon page. But if you want to find out more, you can go to patreon.com and uh, search for Trapper Jack or just come through this episode here at 146 of touchedbyheaven.net. And thank you so much for supporting what we do here. All right, back to Don Roeder and that bar stool and all the things going on in the bar. Prior to this there's a lot going on in Don's life that is adding a lot of drama and traumatic moments and a drinking problem and this bar. Uh, unfortunately, there there's some um, uh, pain in that growing up periods where I had been um, sexually uh, assaulted by my godfather, who was also our neighbor and who was in business with my family. <laughs> and so it was a very complicated mess. Wow. Where- and everybody found, I mean, obviously everybody found out. Uh, no, unfortunately. So I did tell a parent who I, um, a trusted parent, one of my parents, I thought and hoped they would have, but nothing happened. It was, it was my mom. And I remember telling her and I'm frightened and I'm scared and, and I don't know what to do. And she literally looked at me with a blank face and I felt at that that moment, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Something that you can't even comprehend yourself, what just happened to you. And then they have no response. Yeah. Betrayal on two, on two fronts, you have betrayal, don't you? Yes. Yeah. It was frightening and yet it hardened my heart. So you can't trust anybody at this point, especially adults. Pretty much. That's what my attitude was. Uh Uh-huh. And this is my hardening of heart period. And so there was a family secret there that eventually did come out. And so I'm now out of high school and I'm seeing myself getting into more of a partying behavior and started really uh, what I believe is trying to drink myself to death because I was frightened and scared and it was more, it wasn't that I was drinking every day, but that when I went out and I partied, it was, you know, I didn't stop when I would drink. And so I- The goal uh, was to just pretty much obliterate yourself, knock yourself out. That was the goal. Yeah. Yep. Pretty much. And so, uh, but my parents, you know, always, we had always attended church growing up. They, they could see that um, they're losing their daughter, but I did, I had fallen away. And I had gotten into a relationship and it was not um, the best of relationships, but I was in love with this person. But um, a problem happening is I ended up having an abortion 
during that period in my uh, fiance, my ex fiance had told me later on that, you know, he said, you went from this vivacious personality to after the abortion, so somber and somebody that I didn't recognize. This was the father of the child? This is the father of a child. This is later on in life when we had reconnected. Oh, really? Wow. Do you think the event did things to you? Oh, absolutely. Okay. A wound, a serious wound. Yes. Yeah. You know, so here I am on this this path of um, self-destruction, and then I have an abortion, which is, un, you know, the, the pain beyond measure. It's hard to put into words because, you you know, here it's a law, you know, and I'm naive. I'm, well, it's legal. You know, I'm justifying it to myself, you know, planned parenthood. They're going to help me plan this parenthood. And of course, what happens is that's not at all the intent, not when I went in. And it was just solely to how do we, you know, eradicate this problem. That's when a big part of me died. I uh, remember then not long after that, um, I, I just, I broke up with him and then I had complete aloneness. So now I have nothing to distract me. <laughs> I don't have a relationship. Um, I'm away from my parents. I'm away from my God, you know, and I will never forget a time when I was out with my friends, July 16th. I remember the dates because it was a very profound experience for me. We were out at a club and ran into my my ex, and he was extremely um, hard hearted and cruel. And it, what does you know, that mean? Well, you know, oh, what are you doing here? You know, we're so excited to, you know, we're heading to this area, and you know, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm seeing this girl, and did it all this kind of, you know, just this callousness. And I was at a real low point because I'm like, I love this person at least, you know, what I thought was love, genuine love, you know, here it is that he is like, well, he has basically washed his hands of me. And you're how old? 21. But I remember being in, in the bar and all of a sudden (laughs) I'm sitting there on the, on the bar stool. And I have this, this, it is uh, nothing other than to me a supernatural experience where it was like the veil of what was all around me had been lifted. And I could hear in my heart and I hear that um, the different sins of the people that were in there, like this one's cheating on their wife, this one's happening here, this one's happening here, this one, you know, and then I'm seeing my own self and I'm like, what? You know, and I'm getting overwhelmed and I'm like, I I, I get it. I got to get out of here. And I I, um, ended up Leaving my friends that was that I that I had um, uh, arrived there with. Can I and, can, I, can I put you on pause for one second here? I, I need to go back in the bar for a second. Sure. I, I need to get a drink. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So you're walking in and mm-hmm. you're just getting this rush of information. You're looking at someone going cheating. You're looking at this person over there and you're going, this person has done whatever. You're you're kind of seeing their you're hearing their sins inside somehow. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like. Uh, I don't know what's going on. And, um, do you say anything to anybody at this point or just, I got to get out of here? No, I was overwhelmed. And then it's, I I believe it to be my guardian angel, (laughs) but I heard in my heart, is this what you want for your life? Is this what you want for the rest of your life? And I just, I remember going, I've got to get out of here. Is this what you want? Exactly. So then the the most, to me, the best part um, is, and I thank God, I could see that I was out of control. Okay. I could see that, you know, when I would go to these bars, I was drinking to a point where I would just get completely drunk. And it wasn't about going out and enjoying time. I mean, I would have blackouts. You know, and I remember going, I am on a path to destruction and I'm going to die. I'm either going to kill somebody else or I myself am going to die. And I don't know how to stop this. I don't know how to stop this. So I leave the bar that day, that night, and um, I get in my car and and the thought comes to me, um, St. Maria Grady Church, Scottsdale, Arizona, because that's the church that I had attended um, that my mom had told me to go to. 
St. Maria Goretti, anyone knows, she was one of the youngest martyred saints that she was taken advantage of by um, Alessandro. And so she was stabbed 14 times to death oh, for yeah. resisting. Okay. And what was she, 14? What was she, 15? What was she? She was 11 and, and, wow. and 14 times she was stabbed because there was 14 flowers apart and there was a beautiful movie on her. But um, And so here it is, I'm going to a church with someone who themselves was accosted, right? And, and fought for. So I drive and it's late, it, you know, it's, it's late at night and 10, 11 o'clock at night. And I drive into the parking lot parked there. I remember just, I cry, I'm, I'm crying out to the Lord. I am crying out to the blessed mother and to the Lord. And I'm like, I don't know. I can't stop this, Lord. I need your help. I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what I'm doing. I am out of control and I am terrified of hurting somebody. I'm terrified of, you know, being hurt myself. I, I'm, I'm drinking to no end and I'm blacking out and I don't, I don't see a future. I need you. Please help me. God, please help me. And it's in that moment that changed my life um, because I was no longer in the car alone. I don't care what anybody tells me. Um, I was visited and it was, it was the, the Blessed Virgin Mary and her son, our Lord Jesus of Mercy, who were in my car with me. And this is an interior thing. And, but I have no doubt. And then I'm, because I'm seeing my life, okay, before my eyes and every sin that I had committed. And I'm seeing everything I had ever done. Jesus, in his mercy, was loving me in that moment of this grievous sin where I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing my whole life and I'm seeing the pain and I'm seeing sin and I'm like, oh my goodness. And yet this love, this incredible love that was coming from our Lord. And I was, I probably cried for at least an hour, maybe more. I'm so amazed by how many people I've talked to who have had this moment, this illumination of conscience. It's called a lot of different things. Examination of conscience. You see every sin you've ever committed. And you also got to feel, see the ripple effect. Of those sins. Of those sins. When you did something to someone, you then saw the effect on them and others around them. Yes? Yes. Devastating. Isn't that devastating? Totally. Extremely. Extremely. And... And, and yet, while he's showing me this, he's having this mercy on me so that I have the strength to see it, so that I have the strength to be able to view all that he's showing me. Because if I, you know, if I saw all that without the grace of God, I'd probably die on the spot of just utter devastation. This is also fascinating and amazing. So you're, you're, what a, what a merciful God that he gave you this, that he gave you this gift, my gosh. Uh, but to go through this, the illumination of conscience, you, and you see every the impact you've had, you're, you're I'm sure, bawling your eyes out. You're just dazzled by it all. You feel his mercy. You feel his love. How long do you sit there? How long do you, how long do you sit there in that? I was there a couple of hours. I didn't want to leave. I mean, after, you know, with your, you're in a state of mercy, you're in, you're covered in mercy. You're covered. Mary was there. Mary was encouraging me because I was, I was at first afraid. I was terrified. What's going on? And then I'm hearing Mary, you know, like she's holding my hand, like, it's okay. You can do this. He, you know, my son is compassionate. He's yeah. merciful. How long did um, you endure the, uh, the sins? Uh, you know, when you hear it felt like a thousand years, but it was only like a couple of minutes. Um, I don't think it was an enormous amount of time. But that there was enough for me to see in the amount of time that it happened for me to see what he needed me to see, what he wanted in his great mercy to see in order that I, I wake up. That you change. 
that I change. Yeah. We're all, we're all sleepwalking here on this planet, aren't we? We're, we're just, it's a whole planet of sleepwalkers. I, swear, I keep saying it, but it's, it's true. You know, I, I, I was in sleepwalk for decades. I, I totally get it. Yeah, I get it. But were they there the entire couple of hours you were there or did they leave, but you just no. wanted to be there? No, they were with me. They stayed with me. That They were, it was a healing moment as much as it was an illumination of conscience. It was um, my grieving, my being held by Our Lady, my um, just sobbing and sobbing and sobbing, being comforted and consoled and strengthened. You know, and I knew pretty immediately what I mean. I like, I fell in love with the Lord. I mean, I just, once I grieved and once I, I, I came out of that, that shock of, of everything, then it was like seeing that love that he had for me and going, ah, I never want to hurt you ever again. I love you so much. I, you know, just this immediately falling in love with our Lord Jesus. Is it, was it physical? You say you felt held by Mary. Yeah, it was both physical and interior. Hmm. I didn't have, I didn't see, but it was very much interior. Um, seeing with the eyes of my heart, if that makes sense, the eyes of my soul. And then with that, having the exterior also um, moments where I felt literally being wrapped in Mary's mantle and in being comforted. I haven't asked anybody who went through this, this particular question mm -hmm. is when you went through that and it's uh, what, like flashcards, like the, they're just, you know, and the, and, and all these things are just flashing in front of you. As I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, but can you pick one of the things you did that at the time you thought, what's the big deal or, who cares? Or I don't, you know what I mean? And then to, to tell me what the ripple effect was, can you give me one of those? I mean, the reason I laugh is because there were things like from my childhood. Mm -hmm. So I had hurt some little girl at the playground. We're talking three when years I, old, four years old, five. I was probably about seven. Okay. Age of reason. You had hit the age of reason. I had age of reason. Okay. So that now, now the sins count. Okay. Yeah. And so I had hurt, I hurt this little girl, you know, and just had some unkind actions and words for this, this, this poor, this soul. And the Lord showed me that and how, how, how much it hurt him. And I was like, oh my gosh. I, and I remember, you know, when you do something like that, you feel guilty and you carry that guilt with you throughout your years, whether you try to deaden it or not. You know what I mean? And, and I had never, confessed that when he showed me that and I'm seeing this and viewing this this beautiful soul okay you see, I'm seeing this this soul in all of its beauty that I'm wounding through my sin and I'm devastated because I'm like then I'm seeing the ripple effect of that sin having on this person who had tried to reach out for friendship and I just, I, I didn't offer that back. I offered on kindness. And obviously, obviously he's taking you, you mentioned a, a pretty big sin <laughs> earlier. I'm assuming uh, he showed you some of that as well. Yeah, I will. Yeah. He showed me um, the effects that my abortion had on him. And um, on, on him, on him. The effects, the sin, the effect that my sin personally, my personal sin had on him while he was on the cross. Mm. And I would have been completely annihilated had not the mother of God been with me at that moment, um, holding me. Um, just her presence gave me strength to see what my personal sin had had accounted for that cost on the cross i excuse me not something i will ever forget as long as i live um and it's not something i ever want to forget and this is where it's like wow this is the mystery of god 
This is the mystery of his mercy. Because as I'm seeing my own personal effects of this grievous sin, he's pouring his mercy out to me because I was ready to receive it and poured his mercy into my heart. Love incarnate. I, I, I don't know how to put it into words. It was and is um, transforming, beautiful, holy, sacred, empowering, as well as extremely humbling, extremely humbling. Um, to that point, um, based on where you were, was there an I, I'm sorry in there prior to this no. moment? No, there wasn't. I no, I, I can honestly say there was pricks at my conscience, you know, like you're, you're just like these little pricks at the conscience to, you know, you're hearing that the government is saying it's okay, right? So you justify it. Well, it's a law, so it must be good, right? It must be okay. Not that it's good, but it must be okay. And you're like justifying everything. So no, I had not. I had not asked for forgiveness. I had not gone to confession. I I didn't. Um, I mm -mm, no. I was I was basically a train wreck <laughs> because I think that was the catalyst for an act of great mercy that God had. And I do, I consider my daughter because I do, I, I know that, it, that, that she's a girl. After the abortion, I, I uh, participated in the Rachel's uh, Vineyard Retreat, which I highly recommend to anybody who has had an abortion go through that retreat. The, my, my daughter, it became obvious that it was, it was a girl and that, that her name, because, and I know that it's faith because I had in my head a different name. And then the word kept coming to my heart, faith, faith. And I'm like, faith. I'm like, faith, faith, faith is her name. And then I had peace. And, and, and I say this, my, my choice has a name, right? My, it's, it's a choice that we have, but, but my choice had a, has a name. She, she, she has a name. And, um, but I will, I do have to say, and of course, he's like God of hosts. He's forgiven me. He's had mercy on me. He, you know, I'm begging him for making reparation prayers, you know, for the effects of what had happened. He accepted those. i just blown away by God's magnanimity of his love for us, even after we've wounded, to show us that we could also help aid those people from our past that yeah. we have wounded. I, I'm, I'm reminded of, uh, I was talking to a gentleman by the name of Jose out in LA and he had a near death experience, had a life review. And in that life review, he, he also, as many do have that, um, illumination of conscience, examination of conscience. And in the moment he wanted to come back and fix things. He just wanted to come back because he saw the wounds he had left on people and the ripple effect and wh wh what that led to and what that led to and what that led to. And he mm -hmm. just wanted to come back. I don't know if that rings a bell with you. Well, I didn't want to go back in time. I, I no, I, I, now as far as supernaturally believing and trusting in the Lord that nothing is impossible for him and with him. Yeah, I trust that that there are things that we can't see in our um in our prayers and in our desire to truly humble ourselves and make reparation for the sins that we have committed and that we have hurt others in and through that God works in a mysterious way we may never see it here on this earth but that he he takes those those prayers of repentance, true contrite repentance, and and um, and reparation prayers to um, do things that we have no comprehension. Right. Uh, you know, I, you know, think of Padre Pio, right, when he was praying the Rosary, and um, and they're asking him, "Well, who are you praying this Rosary for?" And he's like, "My mom." And they're like, well, "Your mom's dead. How long?" He said, "Well, you know, she's in heaven now because of the prayers I'm praying now." Those prayers are outside of time. We have to rem remember that there, you know, there's no hopeless situation. And since then, you've heard about this upcoming global examination of conscience, illumination of conscience, yes? I have. 
And mine, you know, and, and like I'm hearing about it more and more because mine happened like 30 some years ago. And, um, and, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm beginning to hear of it more and more. And I'm not surprised because, I, you know, looking at the state of the world, I'm surprised the good God has been, you know, but I can't judge because I look at how long he waited for me. Yeah. You know? Do you find it stunning? Now, you went through this. You went through this. So when you hear the mystics say most people, most people are actually going to go back to their old ways and not change. Does that, does that surprise you? Uh, you know, it, 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 it does and it doesn't. Does it deeply grieve me? Yeah. I think that, that's why I'm, I'm, I pray repar- reparation prayers daily. And that is um, a primary voc- uh, for me is to pray for reparation for the sins of the world. Um, and upon my conversion 30 years ago, that is also what I had asked to do. Let me make reparation, not only for my own sins that I have committed and, and have wounded so many others, but that I can see that are now in the world not having this experience that I have had to know that you exist and that you are alive and that you are good and that you are love and that your mercy abounds and is unfathomable. You know, I wanted to scream it from the the rooftops. I think. Do you change immediately from this moment? Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Mom and dad thought I joined a cult because I (laughs) immediately, I started going to daily mass I went to reconciliation to the sacrament as soon as I could. I think I shocked the priest because, you know, he's like, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, you know, like, um, and I'm going to adoration as often as possible. I'm reading. I start to voraciously read. I was drawn towards the lives of the saints. But at this point, I had never heard of Fatima or Lourdes. You know, I'm just coming in, right? I'm coming into the church. There's a really unique thing that happens in and around this time. My brother, who was uh, at the serving at a restaurant in Scottsdale, Scottsdale Airport, met this amazing couple who who couldn't go to Medjugorje, and they um, offered him a trip to Medjugorje. Then he comes home and he tells my mom and everything, and he has this book in his hand, and. He, so my mom and my dad said, sure, that's fine. Wow, what an opportunity to go to Europe. You know, you've never been there. And so, but before that book could even hit the coffee table, you know, I grabbed hold of it. And I'm like, what is this? And it was, and I can't, is it Father Pelletier? I don't remember, but it's, I remember it being the same book that Father Calloway read because I remember reading his book and I'm like, oh, that's the same book that I read. How amazing. Is it the messages uh, book, the, all the messages from Mary? No, it's not the messages book. It was a book that went into the beginnings of the apparitions of magic war. And it's kind of laying the groundwork from the very, this was like in the very, very beginning. Early eighties was 81. Yeah. The, the, the book was from that period. And when, you know, the visionaries were all tested and they had, you know, um, all the electronics hooked up to them. They, they found that they were normal and that they were definitely in a state of, of not being in this world, that they were seeing something that they could not. Um, so it, it went through that as well. You know, the book fascinated me, but more so than what was happening to the actual visionaries was the fact. To me, what struck me was I remember reading this going, God the Father is sending the mother of his son to wake us up. I, I just remember thinking that I'm like, God in his omnipotent love, this unfathomable love he has for us is allowing his mother here on earth to, to, to point us to her son. I read that book, like probably that day that I, that I picked it up and I, you know, immediately I, I believed, I mean, I did, I just, I was like, I want to go to, I want to go there someday. And I remember thinking in my heart, um, you know, saying that prayer, I'm like, Mary, I'd love to go, you know, and a year later I was blessed with a trip to be able to go. And next week we will head out on that journey to Magigoria, Bosnia and so many more experiences for Don Roeder. There were so many miracles. Yes. Okay. So I saw 
um, Mount Krizovic, the cross on Mount Krizovic. And I was walking with other people. So they saw it too. So I knew that I wasn't nuts because I'm like, are you seeing this? It doesn't end here. Uh, that's also the name of the of the website, the blog, and the book from Don Roeder. It doesn't end here. More about this next week. You know, one of the things, just one of the things that uh, is jumping out at me about this illumination of conscience, and I've talked to so many people who've had this moment, but what's interesting is they all have something in common. If I have this right, as I go through it, and there's a number of them, all of them have experienced this illumination of conscience before going to Magigoria in Bosnia. I mean, no one's just, that I've talked to, I'm sure it's happened, but anyone I've talked to has had this experience and then finds themselves in Magigoria within a few months, a year, whatever it is, or they're there when they have the illumination of conscience. Hi, David, down in Australia. I know you're listening. Uh, so I just find it, there's this connection, this illumination of conscience with uh, Mary and with Magigoria and what's going on about, I'm just, just noticing. Uh, is this kind of interesting? Kind of interesting. I don't know, whatever whatever that's all about. So just a thought. In the meantime, if an angel saddles up to you at a bar and says, is this the life you want? <laughs> Give the answer serious consideration, okay? In the meantime, I need your story here at touchedbyheaven.net. I thank you for your support through Patreon, patreon.com. Nina Leach, thank you so much, Nina. Our shout out this uh, month from uh, for Patreon support, patreon.com. Just search for Trapper Jack. And I will see you here next week at Touched by Heaven everyday encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack.